In question three of this series, where we find the absolute maximum minimum using partial derivatives, our question reads, find the absolute maximum minimum values of the function f at x is equal to the expression on its right, where its limits are shown in this notation. Similar to what we saw in questions one and two, this time x is between zero and three, and y is between zero and two. Now rather than going through all the details we did in questions one and two, I wanna show you the solution to this example, but with visuals as well. What you're supposed to do from the get-go is find the partial derivative with respect to x and then the partial derivative with respect to y, then subsequently solve the two equations, which are a system of equations simultaneously. If you do that correctly, the only critical point you should get, which I'll represent as cp, is at one and one. Then you would substitute this point into your function. And if you do that, one to the power of two is one, negative two times one times one is negative two, and two times one is two. You end up with an output of one. At the same time, this represented on a Cartesian plane would look like this, where zero to three is a line ranging from zero to three, and zero to two is a line ranging from zero to two on the vertical. So you have a rectangle where you can find your absolute maximum and minimum. Given that our critical point is within this range between zero and three and three and two, you're allowed to evaluate the function at this point. And that's why we did. So technically at this point, the maximum is at one and it happens at the critical point one and one, except we also need to find out what happens along L1, L2, L3, and L4, just like what we did with questions one and two. So I'll show you how to find out what happens along L1, and then you can replicate that for the other three sides. Technically, what you're supposed to do is evaluate the function as it is, where x is unknown because between zero and three, there are infinite x values, but the y is known. So you evaluate it at x and zero, because y is zero along this line is equal to x squared minus two xy plus two y. So let's substitute those values, x and zero. That becomes x squared. This becomes zero because we have a factor of y and that's zero, so it becomes zero. And so does that. Now you evaluate this at the absolute limits of this line. The limits are between zero and three. So setting x is equal to zero and x is equal to three, we get three to the power of two, that's equal to nine, and zero to the power of two is zero. So right now our absolute maximum is at nine because it beats one, and our absolute minimum is at zero. Now you're supposed to do this for L2, L3, and L4. It turns out that if you find all of the outputs for these lines, the minimum will be a value of zero, and it actually occurs at zero and zero, and your maximum will be at nine, and that occurs at three and zero. Now, how does this look like graphically? What does this even mean in a 3D plane? Take a look at your screen. Notice that in 2D, we saw what was shaded. But in 3D, when we substitute a point at three and zero, this is the y-axis, this is the x, and this point right here is at three and zero, the output happened to be nine. And take a look, the output on a 3D plane is the height. Now we also found out that the minimum occurred at zero and zero. If you look at this along this particular range, the range that they gave us in the question, at zero and zero, that's the lowest the plane goes. And that's only the case within this box. Of course, if you change the domain, this will also change. And there you have it. That is how to find the absolute maximum minimum using partial derivatives.